Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Paladins Console League. My name is Rain Day, and this is Gormizer. We're about to get into the action here for EU PS4. And, of course, Brutal Fisher, Cyclone GG up to bat here before we start getting into North America. And what do we have to say about these teams, Gorm? I mean, I'm actually excited because Brutal Fisher is one of the newer rosters that has come through, and Cyclone was Midnight Oligarchs, like the team that was always number two to Flashpoint. So right. this has been a relatively tough fight for that number two spot, right? It's always going to be who's the first to actually take down Flashpoint. Right. But when it comes down to who's going to be the closest, this is probably the matchup that is the one to look at. Well, I'm excited to get into the maps. Of course, we've got those set up and squared away for you all today. And I'm excited to be on the on the cast, man. I'm feeling hype. I'm feeling ready. Hopefully, you guys can keep up because that's what it's all about. I'm off to the races, baby. Cyclone GG, Bannon out Serpent Beach. Brutal Fisher banning out Bright Marsh. And then Stone Keep, map number one. It is, uh, it is a little unfortunate to know that I believe it was PS4 that was on the 1.6. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, unfortunately, Bomb King and those champions will still be banned. We had been given some information last week that that was going to be fixed, and it was until we found out that there are some still things to work on. We want to keep the integrity competitive uh, for this region and for this squad. So fortunately, those will not be a factor. Why you're not seeing him here. But Makoa, still a factor, always has been. And with the way things are going, you see the Torvald Androx is something that I think has been a kind of standard combo overall, banned out from Cyclone. Yeah. But you give up so much. You get your Makoa, that feels great, but the Inara, the Leon on the other side, unless you're willing to reach for a Willow, that's right. I feel like they're just going to have too much healing, and they have all the anti-heal control. It's hard to reach for that Willow because she's, you know, she's fluttering she's all the way, all the way up there. Stay flight, you guys. It's tough. And Girl, if you do, you have to be careful to make sure you don't crush the wing. Also, she's going to shoot back. So I mean, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, really, the only chance is a Dragon Punch, but. Drogo's is banned. Ash and Grover here taken. A lot of healing. Grover, a big champion here. One of the only ways we get to see him now is in console. Uh, and so apparently he's okay there. But one of the, the great things about him is that the card selection that he has. It just yeah. augments his kit so well with that fluorescence. And Vivian, big pick in PC and console for sure. Combined with the Fury, it's going to be a tough one for Brutal Fisher to get through. But Talus locked in at the end. This one's going to be big. I'm actually curious to see what... Atomic AMK on Brutal Fissure will be playing. Probably one of the ones he caught mine and Nick's eye the first time we got to see him just because his Drogo's play and his decision making yep. was very important. He was one of the top ranked players overall for console. So coming in as a rookie, but looking like one of the top players. So are you giving it to him? I mean, do you think they're going to win with this draft? I mean, not the typical Drogo's I don't know. Right? Yeah, it's definitely not something I've seen them on. So I'm curious as to what they're going to, like, how they're going to put people on what champions, I guess, is the navigate best way to word it. Yeah, navigate. That There's the word I'm forgetting. The lineup. It's okay. I used to be a seaman. <laughs> Let that sink in for a little while. Yeah. Uh, Not touching it. Don't keep here on the objective <laughs> is where they'll be battling, but also the archway is part of the objective. It might as well be considering whoever gets that has so much power over the rest of this. And we talked a little bit about Nox Maeve and about Tarek or Tariq. And I actually am very curious to see what he selected to go for on this Grover because Efflorescence, we know that, but Unstoppable, a card that we haven't gotten to see so much of, which I think would be so prevalent in Grover loadouts. And you have the Chrono starting with it, definitely looking to just get as many Blossoms as possible. Probably check on that in a little bit as obviously we throw it in. Mixer pull, stopping the card viewage. Look at that, Mixer. Card blocking. Love it. Verdant Expanse, though, no probably the uh, at all. typical number five. Although that's the one that we've kind of seen traded out for that unstoppable loadout. Maybe Super surprise. dropping like Adrenaline, losing a couple points in Verdant Expanse to add in unstoppable. Definitely. But this still going to have a huge radius on your heel. So Tarek should be able to touch people up. But right now, Brutal Fisher, they lose the first member. Yeah, I mean, going for his opportunity here. He's going to have to take it. It's not eight miles. Stone keep. A little nicer, I suppose. But definitely doesn't want mom's spaghetti for dinner. 27% counting for Cyclone GG, looking to hold on. IT misses the hook there. Solar Blessing misses as well. This is an opportunity. They know it. Oh, the axe hits. Oh, and it's not enough, however, to finish off. Tito. Tito's the other one to look at, honestly. If Atomic AMK doesn't have a good game, then Tito's probably going to be the one to kind of stand out as the rookie. But Atomic AMK comes uh. through with a triple kill when it's needed for his team. And that 45% gets stopped immediately. Brutal Fissure. It was kind of sloppy at first, honestly, but this is looking a lot cleaner as they get more acquainted with their opponents. Kultura Scred looking like Kultura Shred on that Talus. Got the buff going on in 1.6, and so that's important. Brutal Fisher now 
in control, but Cyclone GG answering back 99%. That means there is that sixth man that Cyclone GG have to worry about, and that is the object objective. Nice trading out, and that is the damage buff. You just saw it in action. Kultura Scred uses a little bit of the bullets from the Varicharger to finish off Don Canolo. He's eating that one tonight. Kultura Scred continues to pressure it out, and Brutal Fisher, they have grabbed first objective. Being able to come back from what was a very interesting first engagement. You lose Ash at the very beginning of the game, but you've still been able to pick up. Whirlwind has been charged and used since then, but assert dominance in the rest of the ults for Brutal Fissure coming yep. online here soon. And again, you're looking at really good ways to control it. Tal is actually going to be going in and knocks Don Canolo off the map with the punch. Talos and his teenage angst cannot be controlled. Have you ever tried to control teenage angst core? It's not impossible. It is. You just have very to channel impossible. it. You can't control it. You I must actually don't it. even consider that I was a person until I was like 20. <laughs> I actually relate to that quite a bit as well. And I'm sure I'll relate to that when I'm 30 or when I'm 40. Brutal Fisher, though, making sure there's no time to even hit 30 here on the clock. A minute and 40, and they're looking to push this in within the next 10 seconds. Kultura Scrat has been unstoppable today thus far. And Talus proving his worth on the console again and again and again. And the last thing he needed for these players was a buff. But there it is. The Ancient Rage Force back. He's got the true power. Actually, 46% in charge, but he ha does have the Rune of Travel, which he can use here to just get a little bit of health. He's going to do it. Try to Blitz up for Wayne. He might get out. He's running for his life right now. He's oh, going to get cut out. I was like, I saw three people drop in on him. There was no way right. to walk out of there alive. Don Canolo, as well as Tito, I believe, were chasing him down, trying to get whatever pressure they could. And honestly, Tito is the other one to look at. This Bomb King, relatively quiet game so far. King Bomb is available. But the other person, the other rookie, yeah. when it comes down to it, who has come in to this roster, and again, Midnight Oligarchs plus T2, essentially, is what this team is. And they've been doing well, but you're still fighting for number two. You're still trying to figure out who can best, I guess, the other, to then put yourselves in a position to try and be the team to beat Flashpoint. But as of right now, it's all up to these two big names. Can they perform? Can they still come through and be... I guess like the MVP, the most improved player at least. Absolutely. For these ro uh, regions. 30 seconds now on the clock. Real Fisher capture. Relative ease. A couple of big moments from Atomic. AMK. And Kultura Scred following it up. Known as Kultura Shred right now on this Talison. Can they continue it though? Cyclone GG feel like they found their rhythm. This is a big one. Centurio EU gets healed back up, and that's the Fernando back in this fight. Both shields battling it out. Benji on the top side as well. Katoros Gret gets into the back line, though. IT, see you later. Can he find Don Canola? Someone's going to have to drop down, boys. It's the Fernando who got that life back up on the up for balcony before, and the Immortal is actually used. Hamanaheno trying to do whatever he can. Centurio is so low, but the shield is up. Here comes the stun, but it's not going to find the oh. kill just yet. They're still looking for it, but no! What? Don Canolo is the what? one who turns it around! What? I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Don Canolo comes in to save the day, and Centurio is still alive. That is a mistake, ladies and gentlemen. If they had that back nine times out of ten, he might die. But this was the once that Centurio was able to stay alive and hold it down for his squad. And I have to give credit Tito and Don Canola. We always say look at them as the DPS, as the duos, right? And Tito doesn't get a lot of crazy kills, has high damage, right. but he's sitting at 1, 3, and 5. It is the King Bomb that is used at the end of that that finds that stun that sets up Don Canola to come through. And that's the push and pull. The reason Tito was really helpful for this team is allowing Don Canola to kind of flex around a little bit more. Right. And now being able to bring in this Vivian... It it's is so definitely good. looking so Let's, let's look clean. at that loadout, though, I, I, because Gore, one step ahead has been the real big key for Vivians. And, and there it is, one step ahead, five. But Scapegoat, that's an interesting one. Basically combining Contingency and Scapegoat to be able to heal a little bit more, use that shield health to offset any damage he might be taking when things do get tough. And who's going to dive this Vivian, especially in a Solar Blessing? I don't think anyone. Ash can't quite get it off last round, but gets it off here. The Incinerate. The Inflame coming through. Can Don Canolo incinerate the targets around him? So far, big fight for the high ground, but Benji's forced to get away. Got up to 90% with one Sentinel still active. So now both of them available as the ult comes up here for Don Canolo and Kultura Scred. Kind of locked in an awkward position. Runo Travel can keep you healed up. You can stay safe because you're Talus and you can move around fast, but you are kind of in enemy lines. You're behind enemy lines. Whoa. Trying to find any kills, any pressure you can. Huge kill from Benji who can take down the pressure of Don Canolo, but it does seem like Cyclone GG have done enough to at least grab some objective control now. 36% counting. Brutal Fisher trying to make their way back. Benji is trying to just 
bear through this Makoa. The Ancient Rage not even close to being available. So Isaac has to be careful here. He is Finally. very close to going down. Coltera He's dead. Scred has been in the back line for the last, like, two minutes, essentially. He's just been hanging out back there. Finally ends up getting taken down. But that causes a lot of trouble there for Brutal Fissure just because of now the changes. You're fighting a, a 4v5, essentially. You don't have a Talus. You don't have that pressure being applied elsewhere. You mean the teenager stayed home, uh, was out past his curfew, essentially. Didn't come back home. I mean, that's, again, teenage angst personified. <laughs> It's Tito going down here. Benji and Kultura Scred. I mean, their comeback potential has been fantastic. And you got to say, with the way Centurio stayed alive, Gore, I don't feel very confident about this going any other way because it was it was so close. I mean, like I said, nine times out of ten, he goes down there. That's a 2-0 push. Brutal Fisher, so far, looking dominant for me in the set. Looking incredible, I would say, from just the way things have gone in the split. And again, this is one of those regions that is always going to be tough because it's similar to stuff we've seen in the PGS and the PPL even in the past where you have one team that is above and beyond everybody else right now. Yep. But Flashpoint, it's looking like teams are starting to catch up. And because of that, you start seeing the rest of the crew, everyone else in that region, looking a lot closer. Cyclone here, even though they haven't been able to capture a point, have been able to find some phenomenal defenses, or at least that last one was incredible. So if they can find another one here and at least stall them out a little longer, then I expect this to potentially be at least a 3-3 start and then potentially shift things up in map two. King Bomb at the ready. For T2 and oh, Benji comes in at the wrong time. Gets deleted by the Bomb King. Centurio holding down this right side. That's been the issue for Brutal Fisher. They cannot siege well enough against Cyclone GG. And T2 and this Fernando have just been unstoppable. Maybe if we take a look at the items, we'll see this Vivian having an easier time. I mean, she's sapping rounds going into the Conorize. You would think, you know, that this is going to obviously give Centurio and the rest of Cyclone G in a GG an advantage against Benji, but they feel so confident with T2 alone, with no Wrecker, to be able to just hold it against Benji uh, and Atomic AMK, who has bought the Wrecker too for himself and the Blast Shields, but it just hasn't been working. This is what's going to make the difference in this push. Ults are going to be coming online, though, and that's going to be, I think, the big game changer towards uh -oh. the end. That's going to be a beautiful size uh -oh. of Crash being able to pick up a couple of stuns, and now Kultura Scred is going to get aggressive, get in their face, and the damage is coming through. Huge stuff there. 39 seconds, and they finally found that upper balcony. Is this going to be it? Brutal Fisher now just bullying this turtle, and the Ancient Rage isn't going to get popped. He would be too delayed. It'd be five people melting down one at 10,000 HP. It's all good, but not when five people are shooting at you in Paladins. Cyclone have to jump down if they want to be able to hold on to this. Centurio gets a little bit of healing before he does commit down. But the Immortal has to come out because his health just gets shredded. Kultura Scred doing whatever he can, Hello. and now he's in the back Whoa. line. Gets deleted. T2 had it coming. But it didn't go to the right place. Solar Blessing a day late and a dollar short. Brutal Fisher now in control. But really, haven't they been in control this entire time, Gore? I mean, that was impressive, essentially losing that engagement. I would say, like, if you're tallying up points overall and who's able to pick up X, Y, Z, ults used, kills converted, things like that, I feel like Brutal Fisher, towards the end of that push, are kind of losing the engagement. Hamana Haino does get up a, get a good ult 30 Hamana, seconds Hamana. before. But they, uh, they have a good fight back from Cyclone. But I'm no one pays attention to the objective. You didn't drop a beat saying that name. That was fantastic. Hamana Haino. Hamana Hamana. That's what I always think of when... That's got to be from a cartoon or something back in the day. I don't know what that's from. Maybe a, an old sketch. Some comedians. I'm not sure. Brutal Fisher, though. All laughs and giggles. Cyclone GG a little quieter. Vivian has a question. Don Canola specifically wants the answer, and it's just, have you met his friends? So far, Brutal Fisher haven't met many of them because they've been 3-1, and they've been able to keep this Vivian in check, even though she's running unchecked ambition. So will that change this time around? We'll have to wait and see. Solar Blessing comes in quite late, and there's Ian Flame. Now trying to get whatever positioning they can. Hamana still stuck up on the high ground. Finally drops down, but that's 30% picked up for Brutal Fisher, and they're being able to hold on to this again. The Inflame came through, but the Inflame doesn't really change too much here for Cyclone. Maybe a little bit of pressure. A beautiful hook. Tarek is incredibly Whoa. low and finally gets taken down. That's a big one. They got the Grover. That's the AoE pressure. Atomic now has to back off. And with combat mechanics, Cyclone GG are in a very good spot. It's just about zoning now, ladies and gentlemen. 
can they do it? What a Brutal Fisher have? No true power to get back on the objective. They have a Seismic Crash, which has been a great utility start up for a fight for them. And they also have the Enlightenment, so they can send the Leon on, maybe buy a second. But Cyclone GG and Centurio are absolutely zoning. Look at the way they are just approaching this, but they're too late. And Hamana Haino can't get back on the objective. That's just going to go Cyclone's way. And unfortunately, now you're losing your Talus. You're losing your Ash. Maybe a little bit too much aggression coming down from Brutal Fisher when the pressure should have been pressure more to stay out late. the point. Now you're both crowded. Now you're both crowded. Talus may be a little bit too aggressive. Although he's been having a lot of great moments. I feel like that's one of those things. I mean, you've been mentioning how much damage he has been shredding through people. But I feel like even that is an understatement. Like, there's been so many kills picked Absolutely. up by either Kultura or because of Kultura that has made this Talus so worthwhile. Yeah, and I mean, the way that he's playing around it, the mid-range buff is where Talus usually doesn't excel. This trade out right here is where he falls apart. He's got to get, get so in that he's basically committed. But at this point, he can kind of play the field, you know? And what would you expect from a teenager, huh? Full commitments. You know, save that for adulthood. Save that for your 20s, score where you have no idea what you're doing. This is true. You have no idea what you're doing in your 20s. It's yeah, all, you're getting married. You're just winging it. What's going on, man? Yeah, you're. I'm winging it. Is there a ta <laughs> He's winging it. I've, I've He's winged committed. it. Winged it. <laughs> you've, won it you've won it. Into you've marriage. It, and now you will win it. <laughs> because I think uh, I think you're making the right decision here, pal. Minute 14 seconds left. Not so serious as marriage, but serious indeed. Cyclone GG looking to take a win. But Brutal Fisher holding on to this 3 2 lead right now. A minute left for all these teams. He's trying to fin and to push, but they've got to find a pick somewhere. Kultura Scrat gets low. Centurio battling it out. He's been really fantastic on the Fernando today in terms of just holding down the objective. Nice stun from the fire strike. <laughs> Maybe not what Atomic expected. Didn't really have any casualties, but it did look cool. That awkward moment where it might have been a missed heal that just happened to come through and hit Atomic. Hey, man. Either way, you're set up. Kultura. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Trying to do whatever he can in terms of pressure, but this has been a good hold from Cyclone, I think, or a good re-grasping of the area from Cyclone. Unfortunately, they're losing a lot of health bars in the process. IT sitting about 50%, but they have the Ancient Rage, they have the Immortal. So if you want to pop your ults, you can try to tie it up, but we've mentioned this in the past. Tying it up to 3-3 three, three is probably not worth the ult investment. I mean, poppy bomb him off. What are you doing? Just get him off. He just used a shoulder bash. I, I mean, that's, it could have been a lot easier there. Just get him on the low ground, get him in your vision. Derek, though, getting very low. He's trying to find up, finds up and down. I like it, buys some more time. And now forces Bomb King off the high ground to try and pick him up, and he does. So, overtime ticking away. They've lost the healer yet again. That was what turned the objective fight gore. Now it might turn the push. Overtime, starting out 90% of the way. 95, someone's got to drop down. And do you commit ultimates here, Gore, to tie it up? At least the Ash does. Benji starts it going. Says, I'm asserting my dominance here. Trying to hold on to whatever you can, but 3-2 is still not going to be the best slash line for you. If you lose this point, it is going to be tied up. So it's their dominance. You have to find a lot out of this. You need the defense. Whirlwind wow, even is going to come out. And so they're trying to push whatever they can out of Cyclone. But Cyclone don't seem to falter. They don't care. I mean, you got to kill Nox Mave here. Oh, and Pidgey gets forced out. Now he doesn't have a thing. You know, Ancient Rage not popped. I think Cyclone feel like they just won that fight pretty well because they saved all their ultimates. No assert dominance, no whirlwind. Those are huge game fight, zone clearing, life saving initiatives. And they now have only the true power, the enlightenment and the seismic crash to work with. Damage is heavily in favor of Cyclone right now. And that's a relatively big stab. But again, and I mentioned this actually in the last set, does it convert to kills. Right now, yeah. three people on Brutal Fissure are excelling. The worst positive slash line they have is 11 and 9. Then the two people that are dying, Tarek, he's getting kind of bullied out. It's going to be something that happens to Grover. What you want to do to a support. And Hamana, again, 3 and 7. It's a Nara standing on the front line. Whereas on the other side, you're starting to see the 12 and 9. The 7 and 2 is really impressive from Noxmate, but 7 and 7 for Tito, the damage isn't getting converted as much as they want. They need a little bit more push to be able to find those kills and win this game. Oh, look at that. Nox Maeve knows something's going on. Kultura Scred in the back line. He's got the true power. I think he wants to make sure that the Nox Maeve Furia is isolated there. Has to force the inner strength. And now he will drop back. And there's the Inflame. Furia wants to keep it up. All they need is an advantage for a while just to force Brutal Fisher back in the zone. And so far, they've done that. No ultimates used, though, and that's smart by Kultura Scrab because now he's going to be able to go back onto the point with an isolated healer as long as he can make it out alive against Centurio. Colterra is in this really awkward engagement. He doesn't have his rune of travel, doesn't have any way to really 
afford himself the way in. And uh -oh. that 72% uh -oh. would have uh -oh. to come back mechanic. Can you find the long range no! shot just out of range or just out of sight? But that's going to be the ult to confirm the kill. That's big time. Derek also finds the killing blow. He was there, but just didn't get the credit. Enlightenment. Oh, it whiffs. It whiffs. It doesn't clean up the BK. And now that could be an issue for Brutal Fisher. Cyclone GG just now using the Ancient Rage. 99% overtime is ticking. Boy, would this have changed if Atomic was able to find that earlier kill. IT was looking in just the unfortunate wow. opposite direction of the Ash, trying to find some kills, didn't find anything, but it doesn't matter because he was an angry turtle on the point, and that forced literally everyone else to run away. Brutal Fisher, just a couple of missed shots, honestly, and maybe it wouldn't have made the difference, maybe that Ancient Range was enough, but you'll never know if I... Leon gets those two kills, Ooh. how much easier that makes the point. I mean, I think, I think that makes the difference. I think it makes a difference because she just moves in. Then it's just the Makoa. Ancient Rage is down. I, mean, I gosh, I gotta say that that is a very rare moment where we see like an ultimate, like an enlightenment, really would have changed the outcome of a point fight. A lot of times, changes the outcome of a duel, and you don't know what would happen after that. But I think this is one of those where might have been victory. And even if you go to the kill before it, oh, Talos doesn't have to use his ult in order to find a kill. This actually is changing so much. Atomic AMK taken uh -oh. down in the back line. Tarek getting bullied once again. This. The shielding is so good. Duncanolo is brilliant positioning. 95% on his ult with both Sentinels still up. Uh oh, man. This might the be man a has been G doing damage. to the G, ladies and gentlemen. Hamanahenu falls. Atomic AMK tried to find his way, couldn't get. Nox Mave. It bought a little bit of time, forced a true power onto a target that was essentially already dead or should have been, and then the Enlightenment whiffs. Assert Dominance is one of the only ultimates I can think of that would have stabilized this well. Maybe a reanimate from Terminus, but even then, Don Canola would have had the damage to delete him before he could get back on. But it's going to be a hold. They're going to wait and try one more time here with 50 seconds left. The minute left, like you said. Oh, no. There's so much that can go right, so much that can go wrong. Luckily, Don Canolo, at least in his position, you can lose both your Sentinels and still have your Sentinels as backup. He's got backup Sentinels at this point. He's got Sentinels on Sentinels. And that is a rare position. Only Vivian is the champion that can actually be in that way. You have your ult popped and a whole hundred percent charged on your ult again for yeah. immediately afterward. But on the other side, Brutal Fisher finally doing? picking stuff up, but they're losing kills or at least health nice. bar Poppy in terms bomb. of their aggression. Oh, baby, but he doesn't get the kill. I mean, if he turns around, and he just shoots while IT gets that hook. I mean, that's a missed opportunity. We're seeing small things, and now Benji, who escapes, gets a kill onto Vivian. And that either forces the ult again. I mean, Tarek's gonna go down here, but unless T2 can now outplay two, three members, which he might, it's Bomb King for crying out loud, it's gonna be over. Trying to push whatever they can. Now they have alive. four ults uh -oh. charged on the side of Brutal Fisher, but King Bomb as well as the rest uh -oh. of the onslaught here for Cyclone. And they're going to be hitting the Aspetal. They're going in. What do you got left? Enlightenment, and it's immortalized. And that is going to be the exact moment that changes the difference here, that changes the game. T2 stays alive. It's just the small things making the biggest of differences here in game one. But Cyclone GG, they look like they're going to say GG here. That was such an impressive return from Cyclone, because it felt like with Kaltera's pressure, the way Atomic was hitting a lot of the shots, especially early on, that it was like, okay, well, it's 1-1, one, one, but it's going to turn 3-1. Right. Then it's going to turn 4-1. It's going to be like Brutal Fissure all the way. So just picking it up, and it's from the scraps. It's not even like just, oh, you were able to come through and win a team fight. It's like you boxed these guys until they were just down and out. And then you finally found it. Well, game two now has such an interesting tone to it. Jaguar Falls will be map two. As uh, the result of these map pictures switching, it would assume that Brutal Fisher actually picked uh, Stone Keep. And so this would be Cyclone's map that they picked. As so it's actually the reverse here. I'm just getting corrected. It is Brutal Fisher's map now. So to ban Bright Marsh and pick Jaguar Falls is an interesting choice. What do you think is going on there? That is a little different and honestly I think it has to come down to the fact that Bright Marsh is one of the most played maps at least through the console league yeah. honestly through anything that's a best of three True. it can be relatively polarizing especially if you know the other side has a good Drogos good Bomb King whereas whether or not you're able to get your good Drogos or Bomb King will make that difference in terms of the fight and with the way the picks and bans went last time Brutal Fissure aren't prioritizing the blaster presence that they normally have in the last few weeks well Fernando here 
and Leon picked up. Cyclone GG, you got to say, I mean, all of the effort with that Fernando last last game was extremely impressive. Centurio was just on the money there. Uh, Leon here taken, and the Makoa noticeably banned by Brutal Fisher, so don't want to deal with that again. And they will take the Bomb King away from Tito, so we'll have to see how they adjust. Blasters down the line. I mean, Willow's still available, and this isn't a bad map for Willow, but I feel like when you start looking true. at them, Drogo's probably number one for Jag Falls. Then you want the Bomb King. Then maybe yeah. Willow, maybe yeah. Eevee. Like, it kind of starts to get shaky and a little murky I agree. towards the bottom of the blaster list. So Brutal Fissure definitely have the advantage, at least in that. And Droxus here is a big kind of talking point because with the 1.6 aim changes, you know, Hitscan has become a little bit more viable. And so these Brutal Fissure gentlemen have decided that they're willing to bet against it, but there's no blaster on the other side. Androxus doesn't need that to be successful, though. But it is going to be this Talus yet again and the Ruckus. So who do you think gets the better end of the drafts? I'll leave you that question to you as well, Gore. Who do you think kind of comes ahead here? Brutal Fisher, are they going to tie this back up? I mean, I like Brutal Fisher's draft a lot more. It's their map. But there is a stat. So last week, I was working on a ton of spreadsheets and stuff for console. I ran into one stat that was very, very interesting. Okay, talk to me. And if, I'm pretty sure coming into this week, Ruckus is 8-0. and zero. He has not lost a single game, but he's also only really been played by a couple of teams, right? It's been picked up here or there. More of that so specialty pick. I think all of like 8-0, and oh, so all eight games that he was picked over, however many that were actually played over right. the last few weeks, he's been able to come out on top, but Centurio's locked that in. So if you're looking at that, what in the? this is going to be Ruckus' game to win, but if you're looking at the fact that it is just a solid draft on the side of Brutal Fissure, I think they should be able to take it. Cool. Taurus Gred and Sir Benji swapping roles, essentially. Benji was on the Ash last game. Cool. Taurus Gred was on the Talus. And now, look at this. I mean, Cool. Taurus Gred on the Ash playing is. Battering Ram. Heads will roll for the Androxus player. Death and Taxes for Don Canola. That early anti-heal. Inner Strength as well. Fireball potential. Can't quite hit it. 440. So that must be an early Earthen Guard. And so the Solar Blessing is going to keep him alive. But now the brand comes through. You would assume that... If they find enough damage, Hamanaheno is going to be pushed into a corner, and there it is. 3% still on the objective. What a cripple. You got to give credit to the Grover there. Andro tried to get out, but absolutely couldn't. That's one of the benefits of Grover here. And 57%, you all believe it will be Cyclone taking the next game here. This is one of those maps very similar to what we've seen in the past. Even though it is Brutal Fissure's pick, a lot of teams are really solid on this one. I feel like Cyclone got a very solid Jaguar Falls draft, at least in the Ruckus Talus, kind of pushed back off of that Leon to hold the back line. So it's a little different, but at the same time, still something that I think you can expect to do well here. Whereas Brutal Fissure, I mean, nothing so far this game has been standing out to me. And I love this. You just drop back. You, this is what we see a lot of PC teams not even do. And it just shows some of the development that the console scene has had, you know, being better at many mechanics and at many aspects of the game. One of them is just, in this situation, just pulling back when you have a lead. There's no reason. Now it's their turn to stand on the objective, but you can poke at them. You can prod. You can try to find an angle. You don't have to stay there and just die in order to get 72%. Get 72 and back off. It's a really nice for Warders Field, though, but here's the whirlwind to keep him alive. IT now has to go back to the Furia, and he ends up finding a bunch of damage. Tito claims Benji and the Immortal used from the Fernando, but will it be enough? 99% for Brutal Fisher, but they're losing members fast. Talus's presence is so important to this. Just the amount of damage he can apply is going to be great, but Centurio's holding off two essentially on his own. Don yep. Canolo comes and pincers, and you leave Ash standing again on her lonesome on the point. Sir Benji forced to run away. And Cyclone, beautiful engagement. Beautiful orchestration of that fight. Bravissimo to everyone in that situation because Cyclone GG showed you how to do it, ladies and gentlemen. You just back off. You focus what's causing the problem, which is the Ash staying on the objective, not the symptom, which is the Ash living all the time. It's those solar blessing beams. Centurio goes in the back. He takes down Atomic. He ends up taking down Tarek. And it's it's basically the Ash is by herself, but it doesn't matter at that point because she cannot sustain with the pressure. I love the target prioritization. I love the pulling back. And now Don Canolo and Cyclone are off to the races, man. This looks like a hurricane or a typhoon hitting Japan at this point. Very, very deadly. IT being able to find his own kills, that's when you know your team's starting to get ahead, right? When Fernando is starting to pick up the kills, granted, he's going to be hey, one of the best front lines to Fernando, do it. I'll pick up some kills, <laughs> baby. I'm having flashbacks just watching Cus and Rubu, just some of the yeah, best Fernandos I think in the business. You can't do much more than get, you know, what, I think was it a quadra kill on Ash? Hey, man, I'll tell you what. 
new YouTube video coming out. Oh yeah? Infinite Infinite Fernando Fireball. That's what I'm gonna call it. Just dominating. Five hundred thousand damage. It's going down, and if you don't think so, ask Centurio. Your he finds Photoshop a double kill. skills have gotten that good, huh? <laughs> they really have. Uh, even able to Photoshop numbers, and don't quote me on that, but Centurio here, not able to Photoshop anything. He just gets it done. Those four kills, three of them came just now. Beautiful stuff from him on the Fernando last game. And, of course, the Ruck is here holding it down. Look at this. Great, great rotations. And their team plays that. Like you said, beautifully orchestrated exactly the way they needed to. 3 on 5 for Don Canolo, 4 1 and 5 there for Tidu. And even though you're picking up a couple of deaths, Nox may have notably having an undying round as the support, mm. allowing the rest of the team to have those moments where you can retreat, regroup, figure out what's going wrong, and then come back into it. When you look at the other side, you're seeing a 3 and 4 Androxus. 0 oh, and 3 Bomb King, like you're having very quiet games from some people that need to be carrying on the side of Brutal Fissure. Cyclone GG now looking very confident. They have the comeback mechanic to play around, but if they are that smart, I don't see that being an issue here. Dominating early round, only five minutes played. Seismic Crash, the wall should go down. In fact, goes into the dark room, but Nox Mave. Oh no, he slays Kultura Scred after Hamana Heinu uses the ult to try to save him. And so that's going to allow Brutal Fissure. Uh, to have to go away from this objective and Cyclone GG to move in. Being able to hold on to it. Seismic Crash comes through, gets a couple stuns, but there's no big follow-up. Tarek is actually the next person to die, so it's Cyclone again getting aggressive into the face of Brutal Fissure and handling them. Serbenji follows soon after, and Haman is not in a good position. I love this, though. I see him able to use the Immortal just to save T2, and you know what? It buys time, and that's exactly what the Sonara and this Ash do not really have. Yes, they can buy a moment, but once it's down, they're very vulnerable. You can see Don Canola just waits it out. And they're all on the objective. Beautiful play. But here it is. Andro finds a kill. Tarek, the one who gets the killing blow. Now Don Canolo responding on Ahamana Heinu. It's going to be a support, a damage dealer having to get on this objective. But no one wants to take the job. Cyclone GG, 99%. And that's going to be a 3-0 here on Jaguar Falls. And that's the second time at the tail end of a round or at the tail end of a capture, they've been five-man strong with one person left from Brutal Fissure standing around the point. And it's just been casually picking up kills since then. This is Brutal Fissure's map pick, and it is just not going the way they expected. 15, 12, 10, 15 streaks burning for Cyclone GG, and they don't look to be stopping anytime soon. Solar Blessing is a great talent, but it's hard for PC players to catch it, and they have a little bit more maneuverability, you know, than the typical console player. And what that means is that it's even harder of a challenge to do it right here. But not only that, they've just got so much anti-heal. No Willow to be seen, but trust me, the brand, the impact from Centurio as well. No anti-heal, but the burst, which is the way to get around a ton of healing. Uh, and they also just have the Leon, the death attacks is coming through from Atomic. I mean, um, not from Atomic, excuse me. But uh, Atomic has no way to beat down Don Canolo here in these trades. He's just dying too quickly. And that's because he's not getting any healing. Looking to try and find some pressure. Sir Benji, this is a pick that to me needs to stand out, right? Bomb King having an on-off game, that's kind of being determined right now. I think by Leon and Talos kind of shutting him down, Ruckus even getting into his face. Sir Benji has been allowed to be able to maneuver into the back line, get behind Cyclone, but every single time it's just not going his way. I feel like neither of these picks are living up to the way Brutal Fisher wanted them to. Well, second pick Androxus, you're absolutely right, Gore, and also the roster swap of who's playing what. You know, at this point, Sure, you're assuming Flashpoint, they're going to make it through. You don't have to worry too much about how this is going to translate at a higher level of play or at land, but these are good questions for people to answer and to ask, especially if you're saying hit scan can be relevant. It certainly hasn't thus far. 38 seconds now, Cyclone GG rounding the corner. This could be set and game. All they need is someone to hold them back, but 30 seconds left, like you said. And you have a couple of big ults that are going to be able to change it immortal, but mainly Hexafire. Great ways to end oh, around wow. and keep control. You don't even need them. And that caught everybody by surprise. Looking at this Talus, I think the rest of Brutal Fisher were looking at him as well. <laughs> Cyclone GG walked that one very simply like a Sunday walk in the park with the dog, with the wifey, with a cup of coffee in your hand, early breeze, cool weather. I'm just setting a picture, aren't I? What a great time. That's what Cyclone GG felt. I feel like felt. I'm watching Bob Ross. Exactly. Finishing off uh, what is a happy little accident of being able to push this one in without any contact.